How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review. A little bit of crowler time. A little bit of lager in a crowler time in the form of uh, District 96 Brewing. It is their Bright Line Lager. Um, District 96. Love me some District 96. Uh, had a bunch of their beers. Had a couple of their beers through, like, kind of shares and friends like that. And then... Um, uh, the owner, John, ended up reaching out to me and ended up sending me a bunch of crowlers. And I ripped through them. I did a review of about five beers all at once. You can go back and look at the reviews and see them. And then, um, you know, a couple months went by and I've been trying to get up to the brewery. It's about two and a half hours from where I used to live. Now it's closer to an hour. So, yeah, uh, I actually went out there the other day to interview him for the podcast that I do. I'll go check that out too, beermassive.com. Uh, and, um, we did an interview, took home some crowlers, so here we go. Uh, as far as what it says in here, District 96, New City, New York, uh, right across the Hudson, kind of like a Terrytownish area. Uh, Beer Factory, New York, uh, Brightline, Lager, 4.7%. Done and done. Laywise, you know, it's a crowler, it's a can. I dig it. Here we go. So, I'm getting a lot of poop about my uh, dirty glass mafia as of late. Man, I've been trying to clean my glasses. I moved and it's even harder to uh to clean them now at this new place i just hand wash hand rinse this glass i think i have some super hard water or something going on like that because i clean this sucker like nobody's business i don't think she's all that clean to be perfectly honest with you anyway huh, not as bad as i usually do uh two fingers almost two fingers uh, just off weight head um, nice creaminess to the top of that receiving relatively quickly for a non-soured beer uh it's very soft Kind of snow globey carbonation. She actually, actually looks absolutely beautiful. And to a T, what a lager looks like. Nice, clean, crisp summer beers, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Let's see if we get a nose on her. She'd be a lager. Um, a little bit more of a sweeter, slight fruity kind of maltiness. I'm not necessarily saying that's kind of a, not a hot thing, but I'm getting this kind of like malt fruitiness. It almost smells like liquor. Walking through an a uh, wheat field, but then you got some orchards in the distance. There's a bit of that kind of typical lager yeast drying kind of lager yeastiness that comes off slightly, slightly, slightly. For me, I always um, kind of talk about lager yeast having a bit of a funkiness to it, a slight touch of funkiness. How's that going on? <sighs> yeah. I mean, like I said, there might be a little touch of a, like a citrus or fruity vibe to the hop that's what's lending me to believe there's that orchard thing going on. But yeah, smells crisp, clean, refreshing. Lager to a tea. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's a chugger. That is a chugger right there. It's just, you know, it's so well made. There's zero negativity to it. No cream corn, none of the acid oil, none of that funky stuff, no kind of sulfur, none of that stuff. It's just clean, crisp. You get a nice, slightly crackery kind of malt to it, um, a bit of sweetness to it, uh, a little bit of that kind of dry lager yeastiness, and on top of that, what I perceive is just the ever so slightest bit of fruity hop. I mean, it's so subtle, but it tastes like it has a little bit more going on than your typical kind of just uh, utilitarian hop. Um, but very subtle, nothing ostentatious, nothing across the board kind of crazy. It's just super clean, super crisp, super refreshing, super well made. Mm. Yeah. It's just tasty. Tasty. This is a chugger beer. This is your summer beer. This is, you know, 4.7%. Listen, this is the stuff that I would love while I almost dropped the crowler there. Um, I love to drink on the regular. This would be like a kegerator beer for me. If I had a kegerator in my house, which would be infinitely dangerous. But um, it's in a different world as in some of the other beers, which I gush over at 4.5 or sub 5%. Like photons of the world. Some of the, what was that? Uh, there's, uh, you know, I think, uh, yeah. Baby elephant, maybe not baby elephant. What's the one I'm thinking of? Might be from Russian Duck. Um, baby Genius, I know from um, from Swish. Those kind of beers that are absolutely fucking fantastic and they're sub five percent. But those are like kind of like you're packing a big hazy New England style IPA in a small package. This what you're getting is old school creaminess, old school deliciousness, old school well madeness, um, but just enough of the kind of American vibiness. That it, it doesn't taste like an old school lager. It tastes like a little bit new school. 
but, but it's not in your face. Like I said, maybe it's that subtle little hop difference there. Maybe it's the way the malt is a little bit creamy, a little bit richer, almost virgin on a cream ale kind of vibe. I don't know, but what I know is I like it. I want to drink a bunch of it, and a good thing it came in a crowler. So let's talk about it. Is this one of the better lagers I've had as of late? Yes. Um, just chuggable, drinkable, delicious, well-made, clean and crisp, refreshing. Exactly what you want from a lager. Uh, value and availability. You know, it's essentially brewery-only scenes, a little bit of a kind of, uh, they pop into the city with a, um, um, some uh, kegs and stuff like that. So, you know, your mileage may vary as far as where you can get this, but, you know, it's, it's a lager. It's not going to kill you price point-wise, even if you get to the brewery, leave you with, if you like what, will you like this, if you like lagers. Not to be... So on the nose, if you're a bud drinker or if you're a new school beer drinker who wants to know what all the brewers drink or if you're, for the lack of a better term, like me, you've made the journey <laughs> from Blondes to Minsk. Oh, man. Did I just do a Rochelle thing? Anyway, uh, not, I actually never even seen the movie or play or whatever you want to call it. It's no Seinfeld. Anyway, um, if you've made that journey and you've covered the game of the beers and you get to the point where, you know, you've circled back to where, you know, drinking beer is enjoyable in and of itself. While the beer has to be good, there's also a bit of purpose behind it outside of the actual fluid itself. It's worth giving a whirl. So there you go. Another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it. Take massive beers into Google to find me doing the social media stuff, a lot of stuff outside of this. Uh, type in Beer Massif, M-A-S-S-I-F, into uh, Google or uh, your favorite podcasting app. See me doing the podcasting thing, Brewer Interviews, with John here from District 96 and a bunch of other brewers. And uh, there you go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little <sighs> lager right now. And hope we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>